Let me go to my next guest. Um, and that's John Longworth, the co-chair of Leave Means Leave. Hello, John. Good morning. Good morning. And you hear Tudor there and his fellow Romanians, other EU citizens and nationals, not yet able to be reassured by what the Prime Minister has had to say. Uh, well, I it, vote the, the Remain leaves, uh, Leave Means Leave uh, group wanted t the Prime Minister to actually unilaterally give rights to citizens who were already here. That is to say... Uh, people from continental Europe who are here should be allowed to stay, but also to provide a clear cut-off point immediately so that anybody coming in after this date realises that they're not guaranteed to stay. However, the government have chosen not to do that, and I can understand why they may have chosen not to do that, because they're going to, into a very difficult negotiation. And in fairness to the government, they did actually offer the opportunity to resolve this problem several weeks ago to the European Commission, and the European Commission refused to do it. So if anybody's playing politics with people, it's the European Commission who are doing it. When you say they offered the opportunity to the European Commission, that didn't get much publicity. What happened? Well, the government offered uh, to resolve this problem ahead of negotiations and to have mutual recognition of citizens living in each other's countries, and the European Commission refused to have that conversation. So it's the Commission that are actually playing politics with their own people, because there are far more continental Europeans in the UK than there are British people living in continental Europe. So in fairness to the government, they have actually tried. Um, my view would be we're better off to actually do it unilaterally and say shame on you to the continental Europeans if they don't do the same for our citizens. But it's a, but it's a very difficult decision to make that because we have over a million people living in continental Europe who could be affected do badly. You, do you think it's likely that any particular country in Europe will take again our, our our British nationals and say they have to go home? Do you think there's a country that, are there any countries that stand out as being the most likely to be problematic in that way? I think it would be ridiculous if countries start to expel people who are already residents uh, may well own property in those countries. I mean, let's face it, people from Britain lived in continental Europe before we joined the European yeah, sure. Union. So, you know, these things get blown up out of all proportion. I was also listening to uh, the clip for G from Gina Miller about the uh, transfer of the legislation. I mean, it's very, very straightforward, that transfer. It's simply to make sure that we have a functioning statute book. If we transfer all of the European legislation into UK legislation from day one, then everything is the same as it was the day before. And then we can take our time at removing, repealing and changing that legislation which we will need to do. I think it's being said, though, John, that, that it's not actually possible to do that. You can't just transfer European law to English law because some of the frames of references, some of the terms used, some of the actual institutions to which the laws refer and to which the laws differ won't exist here. So you can't simply do a, a straight transfer. You can't just go, that European law, OK, we'll now make it British law. It's not as simple as that, I don't well, think. There, to, there seem to be 80,000 <clears throat> at least different laws that will need each one close examination. You can't just incorporate them all. I think that's illegal for a start. Now, most of the legislation that comes from the European Union, uh, that is to say directives, are translated into English law by uh, secondary legislation, that is to say statutory instrument. So actually it's be already been um, manipulated in the sense of being, uh, being compatible with the English law system. Di and then regulations that uh, apply from the European Union apply directly. Yes, there may have to be some scrutiny of some bits of it if they need to change the wording that it refers to certain institutions that will no longer have a relationship with the UK. But it's not beyond... It's just an administrative process. You know, again, it's one of those things that are being blown out of our all proportion. The one thing that does come out of it, which is the as you've just referred to, is the vast amount of legislation that's come out of Brussels. You know, we, we've woken up and realised just how much Brussels controlled our lives. Um, and, and just to, to, to check, leave means leave, means you want to bring about what? We are leaving, it is happening, it does mean leave. What do you mean? Well, first of all, we wanted to make sure that we got to the point where we actually trigger Article 50, so that's a great day for celebration yesterday. But secondly, Leave Means Leave wants to see a clean break with the European Union. And the reason for that is very simply this. If we don't leave the customs union in the single market, we will not have left the European Union. The people voted 
to control our own borders, to have our own parliament make our laws, and to have our own courts make decisions on those laws. If we don't leave the single market and the customs union, those three things will not have happened, which means that what people voted for will not actually have taken place. And secondly, if we don't leave those two organisations, we won't be able to crystallise the massive number of benefits to the economy that will arise once we leave, because those benefits have nothing to do with the single market or the customs union. They're entirely independent of it, except being members of those two things prevent us from crystallising them. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us.